now. You heard the lobster. Yeah, he walks so. in. He said, I threw him out last week. So why'd you throw him out? So giving it all out, will you? <laughs> I hope you're saving up for a rainy day. Because there's one coming your way very soon. <laughs> the wife wanted a dog. I said no. So we compromised and got a puppy. Yeah, you see Love bear. Island and all yeah. that. The right? They all got like really tight kind of small shorts. <laughs> that doesn't work for me. <laughs> Can you do another whoop whoop? <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely not. I think- Hello and welcome to the Therapy Crouch with me, Peter Crouch. And me, Abby Clancy. Uh, a little bit aggressive towards the producer, I noticed there, um, <laughs> at the start of the pod. Diary no, management. So, can I just say, Ross? Yeah. You're, why are you rubbing your hands together? <laughs> I'm so glad it's not me. No, because it's like... <laughs> Although it was a part of me. I, I, I am so busy. You know, I'm working, I've got four kids, I've got a husband, I've mm-hmm. got a puppy and a three-year-old dog. So when... I'm on the phone to you for half an hour planning when we're going to uh, record our podcast and you agree to it and then change it at the last minute. It really I, pisses I me off. I haven't changed anything without speaking to... Anyway, okay. Well, you have because right. the last... It's just, it's just not good enough, really. <laughs> <laughs> so he's actually... There's lots, on... of moving, there is lots of moving parts. He's actually on a second strike. Well, you know, I, what I noticed as well in this diary, uh, there's a holiday planned for Ross uh, tomorrow. And John... Uh, isn't here today, so Jay has stepped in kindly. Because, hey, Jay. Because John's gone on holiday, been on holiday, been to Rome. We're obviously paying these suckers too How much. dare they? <laughs> Did you ask, could you go on holiday? C- c- can I just say? Yeah. So, obviously, you don't regard this as a, a real job because you're constantly <laughs> making mistakes, you know, you turn up late... You're booking holidays left, right and centre. You obviously don't regard this as a real job. And, you know, that's probably because it's awful, because it's fun. Mm. It's lighthearted. You know, we're all having a laugh. Mm. We're all family. Um, but that doesn't give you the right to just book a holiday. Mm. You you need to write a letter to us. <laughs> <laughs> Formally. Yeah. <laughs> submit me time. She's just exactly, su- submit yeah, exactly that. Well, Jay, Jay, obviously, is his first record today. But it's a meteoric rise, Jay. I mean, these two clowns keep carrying on. <laughs> You're going to be heading up operations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the last time you were invited, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Ross, what have you taken from that? What have you learned? I'm going to pass diary management over to you, Abby, as you so she talk to me. I do manage the fucking diary. <laughs> That's the point, but no one listens. No one listens to me. Mm. Anyway, you're on your second strike. It's what actually was the first strike for? The first strike was the last holiday you went on. Why was it a strike? Because you didn't ask. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah, it was like, where's Ross today? Like, uh, on, on holiday? On another jaunt? Mm. Mm. Unbelievable. Anyway. I hope you're saving up for a rainy day. Because <clears throat> there's one coming your way very soon. <laughs> Gonna piss down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Having said that, talk about jaunts. You've been on one. Leave me, like, holding the fort with the puppy that I didn't want. Four children that I'd partially didn't want <laughs> you are it was hard it was hard work but you had a good time a few episodes back I was talking about the hen do mm. I went on and I didn't want to you know I know the bride Holly my best friend from school um, listens to the pod so I didn't want to give anything away but we've had the the hen do so it? I popped my hen do cherry that's the first hen do I've ever been on can you believe that and I absolutely loved it the rest of the hens, not me, couldn't walk by 9.50. I think I sent you a video where they were like asleep at the table and everything at 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. But it was an early start. Yeah. We got on the Eurostar. The, the rest of the girls came from Liverpool. They got the flight there. We all had our hen hoodies on. Holly was very, very adamant. She didn't want willy straws and masks of her husband to be. And we wanted to keep it as classy as possible. As classy as possible. And then you turned off. And then I turned off. Some, of some of the videos I saw didn't look classy. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, I wouldn't say classy for the, yeah, for when the you, words I described. When you're going on a hen, you have to just be hens. Yeah. Be knobs. No, we had the best time. We stayed in the most incredible apartment. Um, RPA Claire. Oh, actually, Claire's so funny because I don't think anyone else's PA talks and how Claire talks to us. So Claire had helped me booked the most incredible apartment, looked out the window, the Eiffel Tower was right in front of us. It was just incredible. All that traditional Parisian architrave and the the arched windows and the original fireplaces, it was just incredible. So I asked Claire to help me 
get the room ready. I wanted like pink chocolate covered strawberries. I wanted the whole room filled in pink balloons, pink roses everywhere. Um, the room looked amazing. Oh, it was say, amazing. Yeah. And Claire did it. So I called to say thanks. And she was like, if you ever fucking ask me to do anything like this again, you can <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> Like, I don't think many. And, I was, and, and the girls are like, is that your PA? I was like, yeah. But sometimes I'll call her. I'll call and go like, hey, Claire, let me just, you know, get it straight. Claire, she's one of a kind. She's There's great. not another person like her. She just gets shit done and she can do anything, can't she? Yeah, amazing. She was actually away in Indonesia doing all this. On yeah, she holiday. was in like... Indonesia on the the race car thing which is she loves she's into her race car things and she was still managing to do all this thing I'm like Claire can you book us an Uber like in Paris and she's like well you just fuck up <laughs> she's supposed to be on holiday I haven't got like I don't know how to do Uber or anything like that so I'm yeah. like Claire can you get me a driver in like five minutes that fits eight of us in <laughs> and it's there do you know what I mean but she effing and blind at me down the phone I call and she's like what what you want I'm like oh um, but the girls couldn't believe that that's our P, how our PA talks to us. But she gets stuff done. And she, she gets stuff no, done, no and messing. there's no messing about. And she's alleged. So shout out to Claire who managed to arrange everything for this hendo. It was amazing. Yeah, big and shout you know, out to I got you know all the, there was eight of us. I got all little gift bags from Space NK for the girls, filled with all amazing goodies. Victoria's Secrets pajamas. We all had our little lace bunny ears. We went to an incredible. I went in at Pink Limo, which was <laughs> hilarious. We were all absolutely rotten by this point. It was like five p.m. So one of the girls literally had an arse out the window pulling moonies out the window. Wow. <laughs> like, traffic was stopping just to look at her arse, but I had a ball. I laughed the whole weekend and it, um, Holly had the best time. And mm. it's just, it, you know, because I'm not one for girly holidays. I've never mm. been on one. My girly holidays are just like going with my mum and my sister. So, you know, I think I'm going to be having a few more. Oh, are you? <laughs> are you indeed? Yeah, now I know how, why you like your golf trip so much. Yeah, it's nice to just switch off. But I felt like I was mummy hen. Yeah. Like one of the girls, she had this most incredible dress on. It was like a little sticky out thing. And everywhere we went, she was just like walking through tables, knocking everyone's drink over of every table. <laughs> and was, this is nine o'clock. We were like, oh, okay, okay, okay. But we had the best time. Okay. Great food, great drinks, mm. great company. And yeah, I can't wait for the next one. Well, good. Yeah, but I'll tell you about my, my one. Tell you about my weekend, shall I? Um, yeah, I went to the immersive game box and played uh, a Paw Patrol um, game with all the kids, which was amazing, I have to say. Um, so it's like you're in like this booth and it's like a projector and you have to do various things with, you know, kind of... VR headsets. It's almost like the, 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 the headset on and it sort of so it monitors where you move and yeah, yeah, so you yeah. can be a helicopter or you know a little dog or whatever and it was great actually it was on the south bank we did that stayed in town with a bit of lunch and then we went to see Paw Patrol 2 uh, it was a Paw Patrol weekend <laughs> and then uh, we I realised there was, was a huge march in London and we ended up right in the middle of it oh no um, which wasn't great uh, but then we got through that <laughs> and, then, uh, and then and then came on it was a good it was a lovely weekend well, I was a bit jealous because people planned to stay in the Corinthia with the kids, which is one of my favourite hotels in London. And, you know, the breakfast, I'm oh. a breakfast, hotel breakfast kind of girl. Like, I felt bad having the breakfast. And you were calling me the whole time, FaceTiming me with all the amazing things you have for breakfast. And I was like on the Eurostar with a pret, starving. Hunger, <laughs> hunger over, I imagine as well. No, because I was on my way there. Oh, okay. We oh, went okay. back to that restaurant, um, Dovetail. Oh, it Dovetail? That was, yeah, that was it. That was on the that was the Friday night. We went we back went... to Dovetail on the Friday night and then stayed in the hotel. I had the most amazing night. The kids had the Nick of Bocca Glory. It's literally my new favourite restaurant. Like <laughs> obsessed. And then I was so jealous that I was going, you know, I had to leave at five in the morning. And it was so weird, like going down the corridor in the pitch black with my case with all the hen stuff in. You didn't even get up out of bed I to did. say bye to me. Why well, was what was it, five in the morning? Mm-hmm. Six in the morning. It's 5 a.m. <laughs> yeah, it was an early start for you, wasn't it? Early start. But yeah, no, listen, you know what? I had a nice, wholesome weekend with the with the children. I enjoyed it. But that leads me on to my wine because when I was away for those two days, Pete didn't call me once. <laughs> and I thought he'd be like checking up to see if I was okay, number one, and, you know, maybe a little bit jealous or... 
Oh, you know, you're trying to make me jealous. I wasn't trying to make you jealous, but I thought you'd be like worried about me. I'm like, oh, where are you? What are you doing? I was worried. I Literally was... not. So you, were you playing a game? Were you playing like hard to get? <clears throat> no, no, no. I was just, I was so busy. <laughs> just <laughs> playing Paw Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> I was fucking being chased. Literally. Being chased. <laughs> I was. Yeah, but yeah. I wanted you to be like calling me saying, I can't bear you being away from me. I, I miss no, you I was so much. I was texting you. No, no, I did. Obviously, we, did, we spoke loads. Uh, mainly, you know, you called me. But I... I, I was, I was, you know what it's like with the kids. You barely get a second, do you? And then even when I do get a second, the kids take my phone off me and play, start playing games on it. Because mm. like, I was, I was worried that because you had all the kids. Oh, we were, we were fine. It was actually fine. And you know they've got to a stage now where I think I can kind of handle them on my own. But then, you know, don't do it too often. Because we all missed you. We've already planned the reunion. <laughs> you know when you go on a girls' trip yeah. or a holiday trip, in in a group, you kind of. Always plan the reunion. Like the day you come home, we're like, we need to do it again. Mm. So we've got the reunion. You should do it again. We're well, going I to see Magic Mike. Mike. <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to see Magic Mike because one of the girls is uh, having a divorce party. Oh, really? So we're going to celebrate it well, in Magic Mike and she's going to wear a wedding dress <laughs> and set it on fire at the end. <laughs> we're going to go to String Fellows that night as well. Fill your boots, oh, darling. Oh, I'm going to set my fucking groom outfit on fire. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's nice, isn't it? Here's me supporting my friend on a divorce and you're wanting to go to a strip club. Uh, no, well, you, that's, that's exactly what you're going to do. You've shown who Magic, the real you is. Magic Mike is a strip show. Exact same. But it's different. Why is it different? Because girls aren't men, perverts. Men take their clothes off. Girls are not perverts. In front of a load of women. But girls There's aren't perverts girls like men. Clothes. What? What? Of course they are. No, women we think are worse. They're not. They are worse. They're absolutely not. They are, I reckon. No. I, I, that magic mic show, I could shudder to imagine what goes on. <laughs> I'll let you know <laughs> if I can talk. Big mic. <laughs> <laughs> I walked the rest of the week. What else have you done? Mm. Well, you had the, the first episode of your show, which I, that was really good. And her, well I was done. so surprised that you liked it so much. Oh, I really enjoyed it. I didn't want it to end. I was really nervous about it coming out because it's a big deal for me having a show out with my name on it mm. you know doing something I love and yeah I, I thought it was great you know the team Salamander Sally shout out she's done an incredible she job go, whoop, whoop, <laughs> <laughs> big up big up um no I, I actually feel a bit shy talking about it but you know we sat up and watched it and Pete was gutted that we couldn't watch the whole series in mm -hmm. one go because you loved it didn't you I did really enjoyed it yeah really had all the kids down watching it it was great yeah they loved it didn't they yeah really good yeah, we were buzzing off it, to be fair. I think it was good you started with a scouser, fellow scouser as well. Yeah. I think that kind of eased you into it a little bit. Yeah, Heidi was great and her house was is amazing. Cool house, the Ferrari and the... And, 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 the, and, and, and Jody Kid's house. Yeah. Nice. Well, we're going to Jody's pub. We're going to go and have I, a, a nice... I'm up for that. Sunday look. Sounds and great. You love your pubs, don't you? And your yeah. pub grub. <laughs> I like the look of it. Yeah. I mean, oh, that looks like, I looks like I just want to have a beer and curl up by the fire. <laughs> curl up. <laughs> Don't leave that line in here. It's not a line, it's a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favourite joke, though. Do you know that joke? Yeah, yeah. Do you know it? Yeah, obviously, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a belter, that. What about the lobster? Walks to the bar, and it gets, he's banned, isn't he? No. You heard the lobster? No, I don't he think so. In. He said, he, oh, I threw him out last week. So why'd you throw him out? So he's giving it all out, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. Come in here, giving it all that. <laughs> You see, the, you see the one where the fella comes in with, a, with the um, pavement in the, under his arm? No. He, said, he ordered two beers. He said, I've uh, one, one for me and one for the road. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should have another dad joke episode. We should do another dad joke episode. Dad joke. <laughs> yeah, I'd like, I'd like our listeners to send us their dad jokes yeah, in. Yeah, we should have like a dad joke segment, actually. I want to put, put jokes in my notes so I remember them. You should do. Every time you hear a joke, put it in your notes. Yeah. My dad's great at jokes. Yeah, he's Sorry. got some, he's got a load of them. I just can't remember them. Oh. That, that's the only joke I know. Guy walks into a bar with a giraffe, mm -hmm. has a few drinks, goes to walk out and he goes, you can't leave that lion there. And he says, it's not a lion, a giraffe. <laughs> that's the only joke I know. Not, and I don't know one. why. It's a good one. Or Doctor Doctor. I'm what? I feel like, oh yeah, sorry, I'm doing knock-knock. <laughs> knock. knock, I'm knock. doing a knock-knock mixed in. <laughs> okay, yeah. there's, a, there's a reason why you can't remember them. Doctor, doctor, I feel like a pair of curtains. Pull yourself together. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh. Shit jokes are the best, aren't they? Great. Why is there no drugs in the jungle? Oh, they, I hate this joke. Because of paracetamol. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that's crap, that one. You always tell that. It's just an absolute. What did the cheese that. say in the mirror? Hello, me. Hello, me. <laughs> <laughs> that's Lib's favourite joke, isn't he it? He loves that one. So yeah, um, the show was out. The book was out. We've oh, done yeah. loads of press. We, you know, we were on the one show. On the one show, we were on this morning. Yeah, we did a few bits and pieces, didn't we? That um, Capital Radio was a bit hairy, doing the old Truth or Dare or Home Truths. What was that? So we had to do oh, this kind good. of little segment. Oh, it's so funny. So before, you know, they came on, they, they were talking about they did this thing. What's bigger? Peter Crouch or a newborn giraffe? <laughs> <laughs> so what, what would you say? What's giraffe, bigger? Giraffe. Sure. A, a newborn giraffe or me? Giraffe. A me. newborn. Me. It was me. Freaking hell. Yeah, yeah we say freaking hell, right? But like, <laughs> a newborn giraffe's six foot. There's lots of people over six foot. Mm. Mm. This whole... Everyone <laughs> it in just this... sounds terrible, doesn't it? I'm bigger than a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> bigger any, than a newborn at any age. <laughs> I actually think that's cute though. But you know what? Those giraffes are like massive. I know it's ridiculous to say, but like we went to the zoo. I, I'd forget how actually big giraffes are. They are fucking huge. Yeah, they are. Fully grown ones. I wow. love them. I love giraffes. Well, There's a little yeah, giraffe in Longleat that's um, got like a withered ear <laughs> because its mum was licking its ear so much uh, and like licked it away. Uh, what do you mean, uh? Just like the thought of that. Too much kissing. Yeah. I like They've got that. black tongues, haven't they? Yeah, that's so they don't burn the tongues when they get in the trees. Oh, is that I mm. mm, don't know about that. I know they can, can you kick just a Google that? I know they can kick a lion's head off. Can they? One of the most powerful a kicks. A lion's head off? They've, they've got the most powerful kick. Can you just thing. Google why giraffes got... I think it's because so they don't get sunburned when they're eating the trees. The darker colour is a, a result of extra melanin that is present. It helps prevent sunburns. And protects them. Tough fact. Told you I got a star everything. Mm, the uh the end of their tongue tends to be black and maybe more pink or purple near the top. Since Where that is the portion the not as exposed to the sun. Mm. Melanin acts as a sort of natural sunscreen. Mm. Well go. that's that's actually true because people who are darker skinned, olive skinned, got more melanin. Yeah, yeah. They don't burn. Unlike me, like pink, white and pink and freckly. Burn burn alive. <laughs> <laughs> me and Scott Prickly Heath me and Scott with the fact that one million on <laughs> yeah. book's been good as well yeah no it's, it's, it's gone great and you know, thank you for you know everyone who bought it because um, it's it's doing great yeah thanks to everyone who's watched the show watched my Abby Can See Celebrity Homes and bought the book we're feeling the love <laughs> aren't we yeah, yeah it's and it's nice good. because it's you know both things are from the heart and something that we we love and enjoy and it's been quite scary having them out and thinking oh god people are gonna like them and mm. they do so well in la being very well received should we do another whoop whoop <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely not i think i was doing that in the hen no, whoop, whoop. is that is that what it's coming from oh i'm in high spirits after that hen oh. i think it was just what the doctor ordered a but little bit of fun and laughter laughter is the best tonic certainly is don't you think no oh, exactly right I, I've been saying it for a long time. Um, <laughs> so have you got, got wine for me? Yeah, no, my, my weekly wine is the flooring and the amount of flooring that we're, and the options that we're going through at the moment. It's, it's just too many. How many browns are there? Like, no. uh, you're showing me different shades of brown and they're just brown. And I'm like, I, whatever you want, you can have. No, so I found this company, Kendall Quality Carpets, and the up north are in Cheshire. And... They've got the most amazing woods. And, you know, after doing this home show, I want to make some improvements on the house. You know, we've been here over nine years. Things are looking a bit tired and, you know, I want the new floor. So James has kindly been bringing all these samples down, but it's hard to make a decision. And there's just a tiny tone, half a shade. This is, this is my issue. Half a shade can make all the difference. Like one's too yellow, one's squirrel red, the other one's beige. Squirrel the other... red. Squirrel red. <laughs> it, it, I'm not joking, squirrel red is brown. <laughs> right? What, what, was the, what was the other one? You said, should, I think there's too much yellow in this one. I went, too much yellow in the brown that we're, we're looking at. 
It's they're all brown. They're not, Pete. It's it's Squirrel all about red. the <laughs> No, that's not the technical name for it, but it, it, that's the kind of tone it was throwing off. Surely that's red. Some of the things. No, you it's not say, red. Though. It was it's it's brown. It's it's wood. It's, they're all real woods. But it's the tone. It's you know some of them are. Are treated with oils. Some of them are from different parts of the tree. No, I can tell they're obviously lovely floors. Like they're obviously high quality, like top notch. But it felt like you know how many shades of brown are there? But it's a huge decision. I'm doing the whole ground floor of the house minus the utility room because in the utility room I'm going to do like a terracotta tile mm -hmm. because of the dogs and you know we'll be coming from walks with the muddy wellies. You know I think that would be more yeah. practical. Now we've got four kids. And you're getting and, a donkey. And I'm getting a donkey, yeah. Shut up, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> so, but can I just say, anything that I like, you just have a go at. You know, no, the floor. Not, no, it's just what I'm saying is it's perhaps a huge don't involve area. me in it. It's I don't a have huge a, I don't area. I don't have a say in it anyway. So don't involve me. No, but I'd me. like your opinion because we've got to live with this floor. Right. And I, I don't like want you go. I don't I like want, the brown. I don't want you, be, you know, me and James making a decision and laying the floor. And then you're like, oh, this is too yellow. Which, which does happen. Does happen. Regularly. It's a vast, vast area. This ground floor, it needs to be spot on. So it takes time. You have to live with the wood. You have to put it in different areas of the house. See what colour it, you know, when different lights hit it. I know it sounds ridiculous, but... We've got samples all over the kitchen at the moment, right? So there's like, you know, next to the worktop, there's one shade of, um, you know, there's probably you know, squirrel red. <laughs> and then by the door, there's, you know, taupe. Uh, <laughs> near the back, you know what I mean? We've got charcoal brown. <laughs> well, you can, just for, to put it into con, I said um, to our Ross, what do you think of that wood, Ross? And that Ross is like, it's obviously light in the wood we've got down now. And Ross is like, Oh, yeah. Have you jet washed it? No, I did I'm like, not. no, it's a fucking sample, you imbecile. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> he said, does that floor look lighter to you or not? And I thought you were talking about outside. Oh, so fuck. I said, oh, have you jet washed it? And he went, no, you big dope. <laughs> talking about the taupe. <laughs> it's not taupe. <laughs> that is not taupe. But no, you, uh, I said to James when he came, because also Marcus is here, the framing guy. I'm changing my frames if, on my pictures. And Unreal. You've got too much time when you're on. Yeah, you're just how busy you are. Changing the frame. <laughs> no, She's because... going to be like, I've got so much to do all the time. I'll get, I'll get off your phone. She's got so much to do. <laughs> changing frames yeah, and looking Marcus, at browns. Marcus <laughs> is, you know, there's framers and there's framers. His frames are literally a work world, of art. World framers. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's what I like. It's what I like and I can do it if I want to. You can do what you like, babe. You know what I mean? As long as you're happy, that's the main thing. But I am happy. Good. I want it. you know, Christmas is coming up. First, we've got Halloween. You might have noticed a few little spooky treats around the house. I certainly have. All the, um, and I'm not talking about my face in the morning. Oh, <laughs> that's not true. I've got my pumpkins outside the front door. The kitchen's starting to, mm. you know. Well, Did you enough. order them um, floating candles, by the way? I want to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, no. He's the only one with the to... Amazon account and I'll send him a link. You said you... they'll all be just sold out now. Did you... You haven't asked me to, to buy a candle. The floating candles to put outside the front door? I, I don't know what that, I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> but please inform me straight off this podcast. Oh, yeah, well, right anyway, I, I was talking to, you know, James and Marcus and... They were like, they give me a good 45 minutes on the floor discussion. And I was like, it's so refreshing to have like a creative man in the house. Do you know what I mean? Who's Telling like, me I'm not a creative man. That's the one thing I, 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 I'm not bad at. Creation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're definitely good at creation. <laughs> got loads of them. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, you're just like, oh yeah, that one, middle one because you're not paying any attention, but they no, were like... No, no, I, 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 I think for me, it's a 10-minute job, right? You go into a floor place, you have a range of floors, and you go, uh, I like that one. And then he goes, great, should we order that up? And you go, yeah. Yeah, but if you think of it, when I spoke to James... No, it's, like not, when, it's not like a month-long project. Because when I went on the Kendall Quality Carpets website, the wood I chose from the picture, when it was in the house, it was, it was, bright, it was yellow. Mm. So you have to see it in situ. But yet Marcus and James give me so much time and we come to a unanimous decision. So you can't complain if you don't like it. Okay. 
Well, who do I blame, Marcus, James, or you? No one. <laughs> no, I'm sure it'd be lovely. Listen, I, I tr the thing is with me, I trust you in this department entirely. I just want it to be timeless and elegant and mm. homely. Okay. That's what it'll be. Do you want yeah. to cheers? Yes, cheers, babe. So you're going to call me more? Yeah. I, because, you know, I want to feel wanted mm. still when I'm away. Okay, but my only issue with that is that I do, you know, <clears throat> you do call enough for the both of us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so sometimes if I call on top of that, I think we're going to never not speak. Yeah, but it'd be nice if you just call me and go, I miss you so much. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to call you th three times a day and say, I miss you so much. Can I voice note that or do I have to call you? Either. Okay. All right, we we'll sort that. And what? Don't and, leave me a voicemail. And listen. with the flooring, I'd love to be involved, but I've got a kind of maximum of ten minutes to do that before I get bored. Is that okay or not? No. Don't feel I like think that's rude. rude. <laughs> How long do you want me for? Forty-five. No, but I think I think you know, in a relationship, it's all about give and take. Not too much give and take, because if it's too much give and take, what's the point? But if if you notice that something is making your other half happy mm -hmm. go with it so when i come home from golf can i discuss my scorecard with you no because that's 45 dull. minutes because that's, <laughs> that's dull <laughs> Do you know no, I mean? that's past tense well okay could shall i discuss how i'm going to play tomorrow okay if, if you're talking about the golf thing well, you, 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 you playing, went, you went for a golf lesson mm -hmm. um pete was nearly crying because he had this um golf day with um james madison and he was diabolical no, no. And humiliated it. Were you there, Ross? Yeah, I know. And he come home like literally nearly in tears. I've never seen him so upset. So he's like, I think I'm I think I'm just gonna have to quit. <laughs> and That's so I was shit. like, what? I'm going for a really difficult time at the moment. I literally, it's like I've never played before. I was just hitting balls. I was just like I just it, I, I was picking up every hole. It was just embarrassing. What do you mean picking up every just hole? Picking up my ball, just like didn't even finish. Just so bad. I did have a big one night four. I'm blaming that. Mm. I like I had a lesson and it's better, but it's still not correct. But Pete's um, showed me this app that he's got all this, you know, video. So he goes on these golf lessons and they video each other. It's Trackman, right? So they 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 film you from behind. They can you can monitor absolutely everything, all the numbers and all that. I showed Ab for like bearing in mind, you know, I'm doing forty five minutes on these floor chats. She three seconds in, she's like, oh, "It's so boring. <laughs> Why are you even showing me that?" But I was just talking about like when I go horse riding and show you the video of me riding. It's so nice because it's like a... I love watching you ride. <laughs> Here we go again. Sausage fest. <laughs> no, I genuinely do watch, like watching you horse ride. I do. I, I think it is, it's, it's beautiful to watch. Yeah. Genuinely. Like, I'm not joking. So you can see the difference between you hunched over like the hunchback in Notre Dame with a stick in your hand from behind <laughs> with a man like putting you into place. It's not the same. What, why? There's a beauty in, in a correct swing when you when you get it right. There is a beauty in it. Okay. All right. Well, we haven't resolved much there, but... No, we have because this is the whole point. Okay. What was your one? Okay, flaws. I am going to be more decisive. Thanks. I am going to make a decision and I'm going to trust my gut. And me and James will pick the perfect floor for our house. Brilliant, babe. And do you know what? I'm going to call you and say I miss you at least three times a day. And I'm going to watch you horse ride. Thanks. With pleasure. <laughs> right, we're let's get into your audience wines, okay? Uh, please can Pete do a clothes line for tall lads? I'm going to change your life. It's so hard to find clothes for tall, skinny teens. Uh, apart from too tall, there are limited options. Maybe even align with them, but something affordable. Everyday teen and young lad clothes. Yeah. If anyone knows how hard it is to dress as a tall teen, it has to be Pete. As a mum of nearly six foot, not even 14-year-old, who is a skinny beanpole. Six foot? He's six foot, not 14 yet. Mm. He's 13. And he's That's six foot. That's not that big, is it? Yeah, Quite that's tall, yeah. That's tall, yeah. Yeah, he's going to be a lot taller, isn't he? As a mum of a nearly six foot, not even 40 year old who's a skinny bean pole, a bit harsh, um, it's getting harder to find stuff. Thanks, love the pod, uh, makes me proper belly laugh. Um, yeah, well, I was I was going to suggest too tall. Uh, for me, I think it's a game changer. Mm. It, it really is. But the thing is... I bought a load of trackies, you haven't seen them yet. You've been in Paris. No, Sophia <laughs> called me. Oh, you're going <laughs> to... <laughs> you're Sophia not gonna believe called it. me and said, Mum, you're not going to believe this. 
dad's bought himself some t- swimming trunks from twotall.com. I came, she said, you're not going to believe them. So, I came in, I came in, it went so funny. <laughs> I came in and went, babe, trunks. Are you like went, a s- serial killer? Why? Ordering like swimming trunks for yourself. Who does that? What? You've got a whole drawer of swimming trunks. They've not, have you seen... How long I've had these swimming trunks? So I reckon about eight summers. No, so they got holes. All the netting has no, got. No, I have to like, cut the net out for your chafage. No, because <laughs> the wet net chafes you. <laughs> I cut them out. I, I cut the net out. Don't discuss my chafing on here, but oh. my chafing is 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 private. No, my little oh boys my as well, so Johnny and Jack. I have to cut the nets out of the trunks because when they're wet and they're running around, it like think, rubs the top yeah. of their leg. Nothing yeah, yeah, worse yeah. than chafing. Yeah. In, like, because you're in you're in wet swimming trunks all day. Yeah, so day. well, that's why I put a spare pair in the bag because once you get out of the pool, I'll put a dry pair on them to avoid that. But I cut the nets out and I cut your net out. But on the last holiday we went on. I had no scissors, so I had to just like stick my nails in it and rip it yeah, out. Yeah, I had so all like holes in them. So that's stuff. why they're thought... all like like oh, that. Right. But no, I got you. Um, I got you in the book for, for when we went to the Maldives. I got you and the boys all matching Vilbroquins. You wait till you see these bad boys. <laughs> you are gonna, you are honestly, I'll be like Dan, Daniel Cray coming out of the sea. It's gonna, you're gonna I don't go, know how I feel about oh. a man buying his own swimming trunks. Well, why just can't just you buy your sick. own swimming trunks? Like, what is wrong with that? It's weird. What's weird? <laughs> There's plenty of men out there buying their own. But you sp- must have had to type in trunks. No, what I did was I wanted to buy some tracksuit bottoms. But I thought, oh, I need some swimming trunks as well. So I've got these tracksuit bottoms that are going to blow your mind. They got, they're like combat ones. Unbelievable. And then uh, shorts. I've got some great shorts. Shorts that are slightly they longer you, though, than the they? average short. Yeah. They're all the wrong size. No, no, they're perfect. They're great. They're not. They're great, honestly. I know that they're not. They are. Go on, carry on. And then some swimming trunks as well. So describe them. Well, they're just, they're just trunks. What colour? Well, one of them's a bit rogue, but the other <laughs> one's just blue, navy blue. But the... Um, the other one's a bit, it's like maroon. <laughs> above the knee or below the knee? <laughs> no, they're above the knee. <laughs> yeah, obviously, I can't have them like, yeah. like, you know, like board shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I like a board short on the right guy though. Yeah, but that's the thing. You're just thinking of a surf dude, do you know what I mean? But like, uh, for me, I'm, obviously, they need to be above the knee, but they can't be like, like, like these These lads are wearing like hot pant ones now, Yeah, because like all the like Fuck Love up. Island guys and like, the, yeah, the yeah. muscle You see Love bear. Island and all yeah. that, the right? They've all got like really tight kind of small shorts. <laughs> that doesn't work for me. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. You need to do it. Who were we, we watching? Oh. Who was the... Um, <laughs> Sophia was laughing at the footballer. I think it was Glenn Hoddle. Yeah, Glenn Hoddle. With the oh, tiny, right. yeah. tiny yeah. shorts. Yeah. On the Beckham documentary. Yeah. We used to have the shirt hanging out and you couldn't even see a pair of shorts on. Yeah, but he's showing the legs, isn't he? Right, great he legs. Yeah, good legs. What are you trying to say? No, you have good legs. I'm saying you, <laughs> could, you actually could. You actually could wear a short, a short. No, I could wear a, a reasonable, but not. What I'm saying is like a short short for a normal human being is... A, a, like, a joke yeah. for me. So what I'm saying is because the fashion's kind of short for the swimming trunks... I can't really. I need a shorter one, but not. It would be long. Why did you for just buy a pair man. of like shell suit bottoms and get them cut to shorts? Mm. Well, you you do laugh, but you know that's what we do. <laughs> I've got a pair of thirty-two inside legs that I've cut into shorts. And yeah, but I don't think it. there's anything to be shameful about that, and that's a tip that we can give <clears> this mum. Mm. You know, we do buy like a lot, like for in the in the summer, like a lot of like chinos or whatever, and pants and get them cut into shorts for Pete. But one thing I've got to say about the likes of kind of com or Giacomo or any any kind of oversized. Diff, oversized range, it's like you have to turn into the ultimate drip. It's like if you got if you're wearing a too tall outfit. I don't think too too tall is that. I, I think that's pretty good. I think you still want to wear like the latest trends and what average size people are wearing. So why does it? You know, number one, it goes triple the size. Everyone thinks if you're tall, you triple the size waist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't yeah that's true. I mean, she says, uh, "Why don't you bring out a range?" And I and I and I, I'm up for that. So Dolce, Gabbana. <laughs> Gucci? Gucci? No, I think like an M&M. Get in touch. <laughs> you know, uh, I'll do a range for you. No, for you need to do a... Disconcerning you, taller gentleman. You need to do a range with like a family-friendly, well-known and trusted brand like an M&S, for example. Mm. 
you know... A taller range. A taller range. All right, well, listen, I'll look into that. If your young lad wants to get in touch, get in touch. We'll have a chat. I'll have a chat to him. I don't know what about, but I'll, I'll, I'll just have a chat to him. I feel like we need to stick together. Yeah. As Lang strides. Oh, I've got another one here. <laughs> I've got another one here. Um, this is a bell to this. This is sent from Amy Ross, this one. Amy sent in, uh, is a picture of a husband who looks devastated and uh, said, this made me think of you guys. Um, the husband there is, and he's holding, he's holding a sign. Let me just read the sign to you what I showed you. <laughs> he looks devastated. He's holding a sign. So, the wife wanted a dog. I said no. So we compromised and got a puppy. Uh... <laughs> Look at his face. He's gutted. Uh... Get in it. Yeah. We compromised and just got a dog anyway. Get in it. I don't know why we do it to ourselves. The thing is, I, I was laughing this morning, Pete, going out for a walk, like with us carrying the little pup. You, you absolutely love that dog now. He's in, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? It's like, he's, he's part, part of family. <laughs> I've taken him out on walks. I'm trying to train him now. God. How's training going? Soft. Um, it was. It's going really well inside the house. And when we walk on our own, he keeps up. He's brilliant. He's incredible. The recall's the not, not great, I'll be honest. Mm. <clears throat> there was, there was, uh, when whoever walked past, he, he just went up with them. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't even dogs. It's like humans. He really likes humans. So it, it literally, like, Whoever walked past, but then what killed me was a couple of women were jogging. So they jog past me and Ralph runs off with them. <sighs> right, so then I let him go and I thought, I come back. I go, Ralphie, Ralph, 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 come back. Not coming back. So now they're 300 yards away <laughs> running, right? And he's not coming, he's running with them. So I'd have had wellies on, you know, it was a, it was a bit muddy over on, in the forest. So now I'm running, right, in wellies. <laughs> Fenton oh, Fenton yeah, yeah. Fenton <laughs> running after this dog and I'm like uh, that, was, that was yeah that was not a great moment for me and, and then the, the women were obviously laughing at me running in wellies Jeffrey's looking at me going what are we doing dad what have you done to us dad. this, this idiot <laughs> this idiot <laughs> what I've realised is Ralph's got no loyalty whatsoever mm. that's, that is not true he hasn't he's got but, no loyalty he's, he's literally baby. running he's, off with he's anyone. like 13, 14 weeks old he is you went to a new forest today, to be honest. Not well, the that's new the forest, first time. A different forest. It's the first time he's so encountered so many about, people. Like, how many smells and you know different stimulants he's encountering? All people, it's busier there than our local yeah. forest. Um, and he's been doing well in the house. He sleeps with Jeffrey now in the utility room at night, so he's he's out the bed. Yeah, it's it's going well. To be fair, him and Jeffrey love each other now. He's very good at weeing on the wee mat and pooing on the wee mat. <laughs> that's but, good. Poos and wheeze everywhere else as well. Oh. I never is... known a dog shit so much in my, in my life. Really? It's, it's, it's unreal. When you were away, I'm not joking, I reckon I must have picked up... Over the course of the weekend, I reckon about 40 shits. No way. 40, I'd yeah, say. But you think of a newborn baby. Tiny little ones. Yeah, every, yeah. Every, yeah. Time, every time they eat, they go the loo. It's like a newborn baby. Why though? Why did we do this? Because he's gorgeous. He's gorgeous. Right, should we get into this Halloween pod? Right, so we're talking, this is the 24th of October today, mm. and it's the lead up to, to Halloween. Are you having a wine at me? No, again? not at all, no. Because no. of our house decorations? Uh, no, no, I know you love it again. You like Christmas, you like all these kinds of festivities. That's absolutely fine. Now, what I'm saying is, like, Ross is telling me in Liverpool it's quite a big thing, like mischief week, like you have a mischief week. Like Missy Night. A Missy Night, yeah, what the hell? <laughs> is a, talk to me about a Missy Night. I think it's more of a boy thing, is it? Um, yeah, just, probably. Just go out and cause carnage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Missy Night, they go out and like... It's the night before Halloween. Night before Halloween, mm. Missy Night. It's yeah. kind of like a prank thing where they're like egg people and toilet throw paper. flour and toilet paper. You know, it's a bit of carnage. I'm not condoning this. Mm. I'm not condoning this behaviour. Mm. But it's a bit of a a thing in Liverpool, I think. Is it? I, I, I'll be honest with you, I've not heard of that. What um, did you used to do then for Halloween? No, we just go out like trick or treating, like normal people. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone ever done a trick? Well, that's me. That's the whole point of me. You know, that's when you get the tricks out the way, and, then, get the tricks in the and then you just go treating the next day. Yeah, I don't think I've ever. I remember throwing an egg in my neighbour's house once. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was that was nothing to do with Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> 
He took my I've ball. Never, I've never my ball went off the my ball went over the fence, but it kept going over quite a few times. And he, he was a grumpy old man. He was fuming about it. And See, he I, and he kept my ball. And and he kept two or three balls. And then I was out of balls. I was no football. I was only a kid. And I obviously loved playing football. And so I, I went berserk, just threw an egg in his ball. <laughs> Did you get caught? So like it was so kind of like against like I just wasn't that kid. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I just wasn't that kid, but I lost the plot when, when he kept my ball. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've never egged, I got, I've I got never egged anyone. Oh, I've egged a couple of people. I know how Chloe we got eggs and thought she'd been shot. And, got, and she, she was shot in her set and then she's like that. I've been shot! I've been shot. All the Matrix fans came out and everything. <laughs> Turned out she'd been egged. <laughs> oh, it's e e eggs quite hard. Mm. Well, it can be, yeah. It depends what, what part of the egg you get. But yeah, I mean, you like Halloween, don't you? Like, I, I like Halloween. It's mm. good. The kids love it. You know I mean, when you all get dressed up and stuff, mm. um, it is great, isn't it? Well, yeah. we, we, we do a great one on our road here. We go out and do a bit of trick-or-treat and the kids really love it. There's some neighbours who don't really, who like just don't get involved, which mm. I just find bizarre. But there's lots of people like that, Yeah, isn't but there? people, why? People who don't get involved in Halloween, it's just so miserable, isn't it? You know, because if I was like, if we were on our own and kids came around, I think you'd still you'd still part of it. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Mm. Like to see the kids like happy and smiles on the faces and, you know, it's for the kids. Like people who just don't get like sc scroogey grumps. Like I just don't think, answer the door. Turn all the lights off and pretend not to be in on Halloween. It's like you're in every night. Why are you not in tonight? I go to town now yeah. on Halloween. I love the decorations. I think that's something about having the kids in the house. Do you know what I mean? Like... Mm. They just love it, you know, Halloween, bonfire night, Christmas, Easter. You know, we love a theme, don't we, here? When they're all running around getting, a, you know, getting yeah. little sweets and all that. And they're all, <laughs> you know, dressed like two little jacks, dressed as a ghost or something. You just paint the faces white and put some blood on, like, yeah, every year. It's like, great fun. It I've bought an amazing dress. This You go for it as well, don't you? I'm, I haven't gone slut ween. No. No, well, you're not, you don't want to go slut ween with the kids. It's the ones who haven't got kids that are out and about at parties. They're mm. the ones going slut ween, aren't they? So what are you going as? I'm going as a leopard. <laughs> scary leopard. <laughs> 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 the scariest of animals. <laughs> they bloody are. Well, I wouldn't be like, I'd like to be in this room with one, I'll be honest. Yeah. I just got this amazing leopard print dress and Sophia was like, oh, mum, did you buy that for Halloween? And I didn't, but I will wear it for Halloween. Yeah, nice. Okay. I also, I also, I always go quite feline, don't I? <laughs> so you do actually, yeah. You like you've been a cat for years. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a witch growing up. <laughs> My mum used to just put a bin bag over our heads. And yeah. what about that? Do you remember we, <clears throat> we done that Thought Park Fright Night? That's oh, a, great, there's isn't it? nothing oh, funnier than we that. We had a laugh there. You remember Chrissy Sid who Pete does his podcast? His wife, one of my really good friends, love. She was like vomited the whole time. Was I've, I've I'm right. just yeah. <laughs> We went to Thought Park Fright Night, and we were getting chased back. But you know when you can't. <sighs> You can't breathe. You can't run. You can't breathe with oh, laughing. Babe, and she was like well. throwing up everywhere. Remember we went to the one babe, in... Portugal. Do you remember? Was that Portugal? It was in Portugal. We went through the Halloween. We <laughs> were all like... <laughs> hell. We took the kids in there. Do you remember? And, <laughs> <laughs> and you know my silent laugh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Pete, the Where kids were, we were, were falling like... falling over each other, right? It was the kids were like black. that. <laughs> the guy had a chainsaw chasing us. It was in this maze. Inside pitch this black. dark maze. We, but I, Pete fell over, so I was on top of him. <laughs> and then the kids were trying to like nuzzle in. They were traumatized. So like, they, <laughs> I went down. Like I don't know how I went down. It was a fellow with a cha chainsaw. But bear in mind, we've got an eight-year-old and a. No, but they were so younger they, they, then. They must have been six and ten. Yeah. No, I'm four. No, the boys didn't go in. It was just yeah, the girls. Johnny went in. The Johnny, Johnny wasn't Johnny in there. Johnny went in, he was four. We fell over. I fell over. Right, and now I've gone. Right, so I can't, I can't save anyone because Ab's on top of me. But then the kids are so scared, they get on top of Ab just to hold on. So then I can't get up. And the fellow in the chest. I was so scared. Oh. Pete was leading the way and I had my arms round his waist and my head like at the top of his bum, no like at the back. No one was looking and they were all on me. And my eyes were closed because I, I, I just couldn't look. And I was screaming. Then Pete fell over. I went, it was like a full pile on. But then I think Johnny or Lib, wherever it was, went back out because they were so scared. They were yeah. hyperventilating. So then, and then it was dark and, and I, don't, I didn't know where they were. So then I'm have to go back in, but they're all on me. <laughs> <laughs> 
we had to go out the, you know they have the emergency exit yeah, yeah. so we burst out of there into broad daylight and the guys are like it's okay it's, and the kids are like ah! they were <laughs> shitting themselves but like that was that was so intense wasn't it there's I nothing better that than that even. no if they got one farm again not by us mm. in Southport that's quite a good one yeah you know, a couple of times. I'm not sure about it if I'm honest I, 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 don't, I don't think I want that kind of stress in my life I think it's, it's good when you're a teenager, but I wouldn't do it at this age. I'm not sure I'll fancy you it anymore. No, I don't think so. I, I'm, I, I really want to do the Thor Park one. I can't be arse getting chased <laughs> my age. Yeah, but you get violence. <laughs> like, I, I've got like a punch to the rib because Pete's like trying to punch off these, these people <laughs> and like got me and I'm like winded. <laughs> can't breathe with my eyes closed. <laughs> laughing and crying at the same time. Well, the kids are shitting themselves, right? So like, yeah. the, and every time they pop out, I'm going, fuck off, mate. Yeah. Like, <laughs> kids are shitting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously he's only trying to do his job. But like, I'm just trying to say, just Can't. leave us alone. Yeah, yeah. They're in bits. Yeah, just yeah. trying to get out. Do you remember when you bought that? When we didn't have kids and we bought like outfits, and we we were planning all day like to get ready. And when the kids trick or treat, we'd get all dressed up and mm -hmm. scare the kids. And we had it planned, and we were waiting, we're waiting for it to go dark. And and we decorated all the front door. We were waiting in for the kids to come, and. The plan was Pete wouldn't answer the front door. As I was answering the front door, Pete would run round the back and scare the kids in his creepy outfit. And we couldn't wait, could we? We were like All day, yeah. so excited to do it. And he did it and the kids just went, trick or treat. <laughs> trick or treat. And just looked at him. Literally been planned the whole day. <laughs> Said, I've got them, I'm going to do them. Burst out and they went, all right. <laughs> got any sweets <laughs> felt like such a knob I took my uh, my mask off and all my makeup and that and just sat and watched the footy <laughs> you, I really want you to go as Lurch yeah that's a good I went, I've went. i been a, I've been a headless horseman before oh, right. um, so I went to the pub with the lads a long time ago as we, we it was stupid I was at Portsmouth at the time we went to the local pub and we all went in fancy dress for no reason really and I went as a headless, headless horseman and the thing is, as a headless horseman, obviously your head's here. So that is six foot seven, right? Yeah. Because you're holding your head. And then you're obviously the costume is like another a foot thing taller, on top like, yeah. and it's another foot taller. So basically I'm a seven foot five headless <laughs> horseman. <laughs> so <laughs> number one, it was very scary. And number two, I couldn't fit through any doors at all. I mean, it's bad enough just me, but my head's here and then there's costumes above me. Didn't think it through at all. It yeah. was um, not... Convenient. I have just photo evidence of that. I, I think I have got that. some photos somewhere. <laughs> Elsa. Do you remember when we lived in Hampstead? And, well, I'll be honest with you, up there, like, it's quite a lot of American people, so they do it properly. But we were going down, and then, obviously, Tim Burton and, um, what's his wife called? Helena Bonham Carter. They split up now. Yeah, they split up, but the, Helena Bonham Carter, so they, their house was there. So, yeah. can you imagine? Yeah, nightmare yeah. Before Christmas, like, obviously. Do you know the Nightmare Before Christmas? Yeah. Came out 30 years ago. I think like I've the other day. It. Really? I remember when that was such a huge phenomenon coming out, that movie. Mm -hmm. It was like the first of its kind. Mm. And as a child, I was so excited to see it. That it was, was a great film. 30 man. years ago. That's amazing. Don't you think really? that is insane? Crazy. Their house is phenomenal at Halloween, isn't it? Do you oh remember going God. into their... So you obviously trick or treat or whatever. They set it up. There was like a big kind of plasma screen in the garden, like playing like these kind of like horror things on repeat. Yeah. Then you it walk was like through. Moving it, it was like walking into a movie set. They had like yeah. all actors cauldrons with cauldrons, smoke yeah. coming out. Actors, you know, done up like the in, you know, a scary movie. movie. Not nothing it was amateur. Amazing. You know, so visually. It was like epic. a walk through the garden. It was amazing. Yeah, like a haunted walk and every inch of it was decorated like beyond belief, like a Hollywood blockbuster scary movie. The kids were just like mesmerised. Oh, yeah. As, as, as always, to be fair. And, but like, yeah, they do, they do it properly on that on, road. Shit on Thor Park. <laughs> <laughs> There's a place for all, I think. There's a place for all. I love Thor Park. I can't wait to go. We've oh, got a whole nice. box of... Fancy dress outfits. Yeah. What was that samurai you bought yourself? <laughs> <laughs> like, I get like I, I get like um, boxes from Amazon and open them. There was like this terrible pair of like gladiator sandals <laughs> and a samurai outfit. <laughs> what was that about? <laughs> what was that for? 
late night activities. <laughs> it's going to come in as a gladiator. I don't know. I didn't order it. I you did? Need, did I? Mm. What I done? I don't know. Fun and games, probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, we used to have a prop box. So like when we had parties and stuff like that, you'd just come in in a different mad outfit. Obviously, the horse one was the scariest. So that Chewbacca's great. Lot. Chewbacca was a belter. Yeah. But all of a sudden, you go, go to someone to go to the toilet come back as Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh a minute in this house. <laughs> <laughs> E.T. is a good one. Mm. I used to just be so scared of that so when did I was a I. kid, yeah. I couldn't watch Remember it. when he was down the, the man yeah. in in the pavement? Yeah. When he was under there. Wanna play a game? <laughs> that's sore. No, that's, no, that, that's um, not E.T. No, that's it. It's your thing at all. Oh, am I thinking of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pennywise. What are you saying? E.T. E. Oh, E.T. E. <laughs> so I thought you said I.T. <laughs> Who calls it IT? There's something wrong with you. <laughs> I didn't think that. I didn't think that. I don't know why I said I thought it. No, oh. you ET, know, the little alien. I know, yeah, I'm not that I'm not scared of ET. I was terrified I was of, of ET. I, 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 yeah, I used to when cry he was running ET through well. the um the bushes like <laughs> well, I watched that with Johnny the other day and he shit he shit himself. <laughs> yeah. He was like, uh, Dad, can you get a drink? <laughs> oh shit but bag. It's, it's also <laughs> <laughs> It's also heartbreaking, ET. Oh, yeah, it's, it's so horrendous. Sad. I think it's a, I think it's a great story for kids. Like I don't know, just kind of, I don't know, getting used to kind of life and how it is. I think, I think there's a good kind of lesson in there somewhere. I don't know, maybe mm. not. Um, it though, it was harrowing. I've never I watched seen that it. when I was a kid. <laughs> it's when he's. His little boat goes down. And, um, it's raining heavily. That's I know what you did last summer. You're talking no, about it's, no, it's, no, it's, you it's know like the, clown, the clown, the clown balloon. And uh, there's this little boat, and it goes down the, the road in the rain, and then it goes down the drain, and then the little boy's like that, going like trying to find his little boat, goes down, and he's trying to reach in like that, and then the clown face comes from underneath and just grabs him. I'm like, oh my god, Pennywise. Oh well, I just, I just. Anytime I've, I've it never, rained, I've I just... never seen that. I'm, I'm not one for horror movies. <sighs> that was that haunted me. That I, d I, I don't love them, especially not like sick ones. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Remember watching The Exorcist quite early as well. Have you seen that? Yeah, that was heavy. It's actually the head spin round. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's what you call me <laughs> when I'm pregnant. <laughs> No, it's when it's the bedroom. You know when she's stuck in the bedroom and it's like that. She's like, "Don't go in there." Fuck <laughs> the exorcist is in there. So I reckon we do the party then. I reckon yeah. we go all out, get yeah. a few of our friends around the kids. You know, because I love dressing up. Mm. And when I when I say I don't, you know, I don't like slut weed. I don't, you know, not on all women. You can go for it if you like. <laughs> I'm going to go as a sexy it. <laughs> just for you. No. <laughs> no, let's have a Halloween party. You know, send us in some Halloween stories. Uh, get in touch with what you're going to do. I'd like some Halloween kind of party food tips. Mm, that's good do you know one. what I mean? I saw this little thing, these little cauldrons, and they put, I think it was bacon powder. Yeah. Then they put um, plastic toys in it. It was um, like worms or spiders or whatever and then a teaspoon of vinegar and it just but I don't I don't think it was speaking powder no I can't remember I was thinking that'd be great to do for the kids you know yeah, like the little good, cauldrons yeah. and you speak duck apple I wonder what duck apple signifies in Halloween I thought that was a bombing I think then duck apple do you like, like bobbing for apples when you bob for yeah. apples yeah do you, what do you call it duck apple I think it's called <laughs> duck apple oh, yeah, I, that sounded right to me when I was there really you lot are mad, though, aren't you? <laughs> duck yeah. apple. Is it called duck apple? Duck apple and bomby night. <laughs> Before Mizzy night. <laughs> sure. yeah. yeah, I'd like some tips. I, you know, we. I'd like to see, you know, if, if you could send us in some pictures of your, you know, best attempts at... Slut wean outfits. Slut wean outfits. <laughs> send them to Ross. <laughs> 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 Should we get into the agony apps? Yes. Would you like to read one? Yeah. Please keep me a non. Oh, I like it already. How do I go about <laughs> phasing out my boyfriend's friends, girlfriends and wives? They are bitchy, two-faced and I just can't deal with it. My partner says that they are his friends or the halves and not our actual friends. But how do I phase them out so I'm less involved in this bitchy group? Thanks and advice. As I say, please keep me a non. 
Ooh, that's hard. Tough one, that, isn't it? You know, like, bit, bitchy group. It's, it's his, not it's his worse mates, than a though, bitchy group. It's his mates. It's like, wow, fuck, that's a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you know when they get the, they get the wrong girl? You're like, that's oh, so common, though. My God. It's so common. It's such a blow. Because then you're like, oh, I can't really see you. <laughs> she could sabotage them. Couldn't she? Yeah, but there's so much. It seems like she might be a new one into the group. Yeah. And then they're all being bitchy. The lads are really enjoying get together and then they're being bitchy to her and she's mm. just on her own. That's horrific, that, isn't I've it? I've been there. I've been there. It's mm. not good. I feel like we're too old for all this nonsense, don't you? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Like bitchiness and he said, she said. It's a very female thing. Which? I feel like if I went out with your... All your friends, whatever, and you know, up in Liverpool, and I didn't know any of the lads. I reckon I'd get on all right with them. Yeah. Well, that'll be you in the wedding next week. That's what I mean, right? So I, I'm not scared of going up there, but I think if I took you to a wedding somewhere, uh, you know, the girl dynamic can sometimes do that. I think it's more likely to but happen I, in a girl. I, I, group. I am very conscious of that. That things like that, I always include people. And make new people in the group feel comfortable. You do, yeah. Like it's, it's horrible. because I've had it done to me so many times. I make a conscious e effort to treat everybody equally, make everyone fit. Like because Ellie didn't know any of them girls when on the Hindu. My sister, she didn't know any of the girls at the Hindu, and we had an amazing time. Mm. And everyone was all together. She obviously knows Holly and her sister, but the other girls she didn't know, and everyone was just fantastic with her. But there's nothing worse than. You know, they kind of forced friendship groups, aren't they? When your friends, th their partners, and yeah, I think yet yeah, there is normally more of an issue with the girl side of things. Yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah that's it's, it's not a nice place to be. Um, what does she do? How do I phase them out so I'm less involved? Just stop turning up to things. Isn't it? Yeah, she goes, mm. you know what? They're assholes. Yeah, I don't wanna, I can't, yeah go on your own. Yeah, yeah, but that's also hard to do. Especially if you're in a new relationship and you're young. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have felt comfortable doing that. Like, obviously, if, if I was in that situation, I wouldn't feel comfortable letting you go out with all your mates and all their girlfriends without me. No. No, you wouldn't enjoy it. But then I, like, he's going to want to see his mates, isn't he? Yeah, maybe you should just say, let's, you know, less of the group stuff. Yeah, less of the group stuff. You go out with your mates and stuff. And like... Life's too short for a gang of bitches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not going to get any better, is it? Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> All right. Hey, Abs. Love you in the podcast. Pete's okay too. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Uh, I've been with my partner for almost seven years. We have a house and a dog, plus my little girl from a previous relationship. The last couple of years, I've come to realise I want to get married. However, my partner is dead set against it. He doesn't see the point in it all. I sat him down and told him how I felt, and he was adamant it's still a no. Oh. I'm 32. I love him, but I just don't know what to do. What happens when I get to 40, 50 and still not married? Do I leave um, in the hopes of finding someone who does want to marry me, or do I just deal with it? He's assured me he doesn't want, he doesn't ever want to marry anyone. Uh, it isn't just me. It's really <laughs> starting to get me down. I struggle with everyone around me getting engaged and married, plus always are, um, getting asked when we are. Thank you. What is the obsession with marriage in this day and age? I do get, I do get it, and I know yeah, girls want to feel special and have that day, but I don't think it's the be all and end all these days. I think, yeah, but it, I think that's a thing when you, that's a like a kind of hindsighty kind of thing. That's something that comes with age. When you're young, you go, I want, you know, the husband, the kids. I, I don't hold you know, it. The happy, the happy ever anyone. after. Do you? Like, I, I know, I know plenty of people. Like, I wish we weren't married. I'd like to do it now. You know that rush to get married when you're young. Yeah, yeah, silly, isn't I it? I kind of. Looking back, I wouldn't have rushed it then because you kind of grow together and you become not different people, but things are less important. What The, the, the important what? things are more important as you get older. Yeah. The, and when you're younger, there's a lot more emphasis on things that aren't that important, but seem it at the time. Does that make sense? Yeah. The way yeah, you look yeah. at things like is, is like you have to get married before you have a baby. I, I don't think that's the case these but days. Some that's people, not like, yeah, unless but you're very religious. Good, that's not a good thing, Pete. Why? If you're if you're really strong and bonded together, you don't need to get married. Well, to the, the argument that. to that could that could be if you are super strong and bonded together and don't want to leave each other. Well, why wouldn't you do it then to make the other person happy? 
Yeah, but what if, you know, you haven't bought your house yet or you haven't, you know, there's so many more important things. Yeah, I do. And, like, I, I get, ma ma we're married and, you know, I'm, I wanted to do that, but... Did you? Um, you know, <laughs> I, you? I half wanted to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, you don't have to be married, I don't think. I, 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 I think there's just something sentimental about being married and making the vows to each other in sickness and health, riches and poor, death do us part, blah, blah, blah. It's a nice concept. It's it's a nice it's a nice concept, <clears throat> you know. But why would you give up? You wouldn't give up the person of your dreams that you love, you know, b because he didn't wouldn't marry you. No, but you would feel what if it's so important to me and you love me. Why why won't you do it? Yeah, that's I, get, I get that side of it as well. That's that's what I think. I think if she really loves this guy, you know, don't leave him because he won't marry you. That's what I mean. I don't think that they should. You should lose a, a great relationship. But uh, you because, know, because you could get married to a knobhead, couldn't you? Like a divvy, yeah. and then you could be, uh, be like miserable, wondering. or you could stay with somebody who doesn't want to get married, but your soulmate. Like just signing a piece of paper is not going to change that. Is exactly, it? exactly my point. Yeah, but it's it's like some people may have come from you know a failed marriage, or it's. I feel like in a relationship, it's usually someone who's been married before who doesn't want to get married, or the parents of the bad divorce, or yeah, something so like that. Yeah, so there's some maybe. kind of stigma around it i would know i would if i if we something happened to us i would never i wouldn't get married again did you right you wouldn't <laughs> why because i'd make it impossible <laughs> <laughs> i'd be a balls in my handbag <laughs> set the church on fire <laughs> do you know what she said to me once she said if i died um would you get another girlfriend and there was this is conversation and i said I have no idea. No, because you know the people right? who go like, she said, if I, I die, I want you to meet someone and be happy. I'm yeah. like, I don't want you to be happy. I want you to cry every day because you miss me. And then, and then she said, I'd, when I'm dead, I would come back and haunt the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> and if you got with someone, I would haunt her every day. <laughs> So are you, uh, Unbelievable. So would you, if you, you would have liked to see me happy. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Not until you met me in heaven. <laughs> no, absolutely not. So if 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 you died, would you I, want me to? Bizarrely, I quite like that. Would you want me <laughs> yeah. to meet? Would you want me to meet someone else? No, absolutely not. No. Well, there you go. No, but I, 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 if I died, I would I would want you to be happy. And if that was you being happy with someone else, then I would come and haunt the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Because saying you want me to be happy is basically saying you don't want to be no, with me. No, I'd, I'd come and tamper with your brakes and everything. Like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, every time he walked up the stairs, I'd be like, boo. <laughs> <laughs> boo. I think this is a tough one. Oh, so, so harsh. I, I, I just think don't let go of a good thing for... But, but do you think it's, it's easy for us to say like marriage isn't that important because we're happy? I know people who are desperate to get married and engaged and I'm like, you haven't even got a house yet? Yeah. It's such a waste of money in that sense. You know, sort your life out. Maybe just get engaged, get a house together, make your life and don't rush to that because, you know, we only had Sophia when we got mm. married and when we renewed our vows, having all the kids there was amazing. It's a bit like... It's a nice thing to, like our Carl, our, our, our Carl and Natalie, they've got 20 year old kids. They've been together the whole lives and they're only getting married in 2025. What a lovely time to do it as well. Like mm. all your kids can be there. Like what Everyone I'm saying can is be it's 2023. They, they're like that, they have to do love it so each early. other, but haven't got married. Yeah. But they are. It's it's a nice thing to look forward to. So once you've done that, does not, it's boring then. Mm -hmm. Once you've done it, you're fucked. <laughs> Hold that off from there. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Hi, both. Why is it that whenever I go on a girls' weekend or trip with work, my husband doesn't step up and help out with the stuff I usually do? Last weekend, I went away with my besties, and before I went, my husband asked um, when I was going to do the shopping, as I usually do on a Saturday or Sunday morning. I said that I wouldn't be doing the shopping because I'll be away, and his response was, Well, I'm not doing it. I hate food shopping. Like I like I love it uh, and can't wait to do it every weekend. So the food shopping didn't get done and he and the kids just ate mad combos of stuff left in the cupboards and fridge. <laughs> I had to do the shopping the day after I got back after a full day's work, even though he had the whole weekend off. And he works from home, so we could go and get a few bits uh, in the day. What's that all about? Anon, uh, North Wales. 
Okay, so I get this. So I was going to my Hindu hen weekend. Mm -hmm. We stayed in the hotel on the Friday night. So I put all the clothes out for Peter, for the kids. Outfits, socks, underpants, shoes for every child and packed all the day stuff and put it away. And I don't mind doing that because I think a man or, sorry, I don't want to generalise, but you couldn't cope with that and you'd end up leaving all their clothes in the hotel. They'd have no no undies on under their clothes. Like, Pete, I remember Pete t taking the kids out once and sent me a photograph and they had a vest on. <laughs> like, Liberty had a vest, like an <laughs> underwear vest. And I was like, what the hell? So I, I don't mind doing that, but maybe it's because I'm a bit of a control freak and like to be organised, but I also like to make your life easier because I know you physically cannot do anything like that. <laughs> but it's all, <laughs> hell. But it's this all, is, we're trying to help other people not character assassinate you. Physically really. can't feed or clothe your own children. <laughs> physically <laughs> can't do it. <laughs> Incapable. We'd be fine, I'll be honest, but I appreciate you packing the bags and I was glad you did. But we no, and the food shop, fine. like, because there's nothing worse, and you're like, oh god, there's not, nothing in to eat. But it w it would be nice if you were that forward thinking, but you're not. But I, it doesn't grate on me at all. My, but th this my, sounds like I, they've got a deeper issue. I am capable mm. of of doing this stuff, babe. You know, like, if you want to pack the bags and you want to do this stuff, I, I I really appreciated what you did, and it was it was great when we got up and we had that. But I, I am capable of it. Okay, well, next time I won't do it. No, we'll no, see. no, 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 no. <laughs> well, it's fine if you can no, do no, it no, then. No, no. You know, I, I said I am time. capable, I don't want to. And I'd really like you to do it. <laughs> I feel like there's a deeper issue here. Like well, what? Well, she's saying, I mean... We don't want to help each other. Well, Lex can stand off. He's, I think it feels like saying, if you're going like, away, I'm not doing it. Yeah. You know, it's like one of those. You want to go and have a good time? Go, but I'm not doing any food shopping. That kind of thing. It's, one, it's mm. like an argument. Tiff it up. It feels that way, doesn't it? It's like he's punishing her for going away. Yeah. Like like you do with my golf trips. And <laughs> <laughs> do I Very ever similar. do that? So if I say I'm going away, you're like, you'll punish me that entire week. No, know? I don't. Yeah. I actually don't care if you go on them. Is that true? Okay. Now that she's got a taste for the Hindus. I, oh, I don't actually care if you go away. Magic Mike. <laughs> magic Mike. What kind of a dance is that? It's the Magic Mike dance. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> magic Mike. I'll never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> You can read this one. Hi, Agony Ab. I'm Pete. I wanted some help regarding my husband's V-pillow. Oh, God. <laughs> Do you know what a V-pillow is? No. You know them pregnancy pillows that you, uh, I used to have them? Oh, between your legs? Yeah, put it between yeah, yeah. your leg and like lean on. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted some help regarding my husband's V-pillow. You know the husband's one... husband's got one. Yeah, you know the ones that are boomerang shaped and fucking vile? <laughs> quite frankly, it gives me the ick and I feel like it's Surprise. quite literally driving a wedge between us. He uses it to get comfortable to go to sleep. Oh, <laughs> and when he gets why? bedded down why? with it, he basically... He's <laughs> basically flossing his ass with it. The only way it could get more disgusting oh, is the inevitable discovery of skid marks on it. Oh my God, no. No way. It goes without saying that once, it goes oh without saying God. that once this thing's in the way, there's no way the bonk beats are getting fired up. And just add insult to injury, it makes dressing the bed with this monstrosity in the mix an impossibility. Something I'm sure Ab will agree is, unaccept is an unacceptable compromise. I'm hoping that you read this out so he hears it and either realises it's him or at least how pathetic it is for a 33-year-old man to, to have an intimate relationship with a pillow. Please advise on what I can do to get this monstrosity out of my life. Iona. Uh, uh, totally unacceptable, I think. Uh. A, 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 what, a V-shaped pregnancy pillow. <laughs> Oh, I used to love them though. I know what you mean. It probably is comfortable. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. I put the but sometimes you put the quilt in there and you kind of oh, like. Yeah. You know I, I mean? put the quilt in between my legs. Like, but oh, if he's got it, like on the yeah. But it bed. means he's not snuggling here. If he's snuggling this, and there's a skitter on it. No, <laughs> no there isn't. You said there's a skitter. No, she said there oh. will be one day oh, because yeah. it's she, he's list, he's it's, literally wow. flossing his ass with it. <laughs> Yeah, imagine imagine he had the V pillow and it looked like Brands Hatch. <laughs> it was what? Skid box. You like, can't say anything. Like yeah. Silverstone. <laughs> <laughs> no, but come on, that's not acceptable, babe. You can't, I don't think, you, you, you can't have a V pillow, like, I don't think. No, no way. I, 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 I unless totally, you've got an injury. I totally understand. Like sciatica 
or you're pregnant. You could just hug a normal pillow. You don't need one of them, do you? But where did he get it from? The Fairsley? <laughs> Mamas and papas. <laughs> yeah. It must have been hairs. Mamas and papas. <laughs> they are comfy, though. Does I have I would look out yours. They are good. But I like snuggling you. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I'd prefer that. Like, I just don't think that, especially as a man, it, that's acceptable. No. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> I want to move with the times, but unfortunately, that, not for me, that one. But do you think it's not very manly? <laughs> I, I, I think there's so much wrong with it. I'd rather snuggle my girlfriend's V-shaped pillow, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's only probably like the fleece dressing gown for you. I don't, I don't wear a fleece dressing gown. No, I do. Oh, right. Oh, no, I don't, it's, that's a, it's not ideal, but it's like not... In Paris, we went to this um, show called The Crazy Horse. Mm -hmm. And, like, the girls are just unbelievable. Like, all ident like mannequins and sexy as anything. The most incredible show. And they've, like, got literally basically nothing on, but with lights, like, covering the whole body. Yeah. And they were so hot. And me and the girls were like, oh, my God. I was like, I'm literally... Gonna throw the fleece dressing gown out and never look like a slob again after seeing these. But I just can't do it. Well, you literally came home with the fleece, fleece dress going straight on. I know. But I, I know why they're called house coats now. Mm. I yeah. put them on over my clothes. But that must give you the ick. It's not, it's not something that I love. Yeah, but you know what's under it. So you should be st <laughs> stop being nice ungrateful. Nice to see that every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be spoiled. No, what I'm saying is it's like it's like having a Ferrari and keeping it parked in the garage. <laughs> you know what I mean? Literally, like, you know, like, you go, I've got a Ferrari. Where? Like, I can't see it. Maybe now, now and then you take it for a fucking drive, don't you? <laughs> You've been hanging around oh, with the I boys love, too long. love this Ferrari. <laughs> you know what I mean? What I'm saying. Yeah, but I don't wear it in bed. I only wear it around the house. I'm not going to be walking around the house naked, am I? <laughs> well, that'd be nice. Chance to be finding. So, any advice? I'm, I'm not expecting you know, to walk around the house naked, but you know. Why is it always the girl who has to make an effort? What about you? Well, I'm, I'm quite comfortable. I walk no, wait, around you, naked. You're... <laughs> uh, if you want me to walk around naked, I'll walk around naked. I don't want you if to you walk around naked. You said to me, naked. Pete, I want you to walk around naked. I'll do it. If you, I, I would, I'd, I'd walk around in whatever you want. Me, <laughs> whatever you want me in. <laughs> Genuinely, if you said, Pete, I want you to walk around like a gladiator. <laughs> Pete walks around that, some of the outfits you put on in this house, like them pajama bottoms, which are so saggy on the crotch, which ones? and the bum like worn out <laughs> with like w with that are too short. Calvin's them. Then then with them. Um, They're all too short. And then you wear like a big kind of hiking sock and an, an on a chewed on, dog and then walking. a coat, the and, then, and you're just like, the dog. So it's not just me who looks like shit in the house. <laughs> You don't look like shit. You look gorgeous. I didn't say you look like shit. You look gorgeous. What I'm saying is, is like, it's kind of like be nice to see, see what's under there sometimes. You can't have more than that. You can't have more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Can I not? No? <laughs> You've been a good boy tonight. That's your luck. <laughs> You're getting punished tonight. Put the pajamas on. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Uh, All right. Well, listen. Do you know what? Really enjoyed today's pod. Halloween's coming. Looking forward to it. Ooh, Ooh. I reckon we dress up for next week's app. Agreed. Slutween, here we come. What would you go as a if you were a male slut? As a <laughs> slutween. You're a male slut. What would you go as? What do you mean? Or like, what? What's a slut slutween man vibes? What uh, would like, like Joel Curry go as? Some <laughs> example. Joel Curry. Because I reckon he'd be like you know six pack out. Yeah, like what about like a Spartan? Ooh. You no, know, mm. like three hundred. Like a Spartan. That's yeah, the kind I'd of, like that. That's the kind of thing, like... Well, what about, like, that bondage gear Jordan wrote in about one time? You know, the yeah, harness. Yeah. <laughs> or like oh. a little... Come on, little gimp. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want You know, you could take me, like, for a walk. You know, like them perverts do. You could... With your high heels on. <laughs> stamping in my face. <laughs> no. Oh, don't. Please, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> safe word. What's the safe word? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> No. Some perverts out there, aren't there? Yeah. Stay safe, kids. <laughs> no, we've got... Enjoy um, today. I think we should... No, we're, we are dressing up. We're not going to go slut, slut ween. And again, I just want to say a huge thank you for everyone who's bought our book. Everyone who pre-ordered the book and who are going to buy the book still. And yeah, thanks for watching my show. Also, it means a lot. Thank you. See you next week. 